Okay, hi everybody. Well, as I mentioned last week, I'm doing a video now on how to install for iOS on the Macintosh. So for any of you who are working from a Mac-based platform, this will be something that will definitely help you out. We're also going to do an Android build on the Macintosh as well, but um, I'm going to do that as a separate video. So we'll get this one done first. Fortunately, it is much easier than having to do something similar on the PC. So the process is, is definitely not nearly as, a, as difficult. All right, so the first thing you've got to do, go down here to the App Store and download Xcode. Now, some of you may have Xcode already. It's a fairly large download. I'll see it over here. And that'll, well, depends on how fast your internet is, but it'll take a little while to get down. So it is free. Um, the only charge that you have is if you actually want to distribute to the store, in which case you need to be a developer, which is $99 a year. So um, if you are thinking of becoming a developer, I'd advise you to perhaps, just to save money, is to get good at developing some apps first and and then when you're feeling confident then start your developer license because it's 12 months so you want to get the most out of it all right so we'll grab that download it and then what we'll do next is we're going to install the xcode command tools because they're often not they don't come with the install by default and so we'll go over here into our terminal window now if you're not familiar with terminal you can bring it up with going command space and then type in terminal like that that will fire it up for you this is really just the, the equivalent of the command window under windows and it gives us access to all the same commands but we can just um, execute them via uh, typing all right so we're going to want to be in the super user mode which is basically administrator mode and so it's SUDO, which means super user do. Go Xcode build minus license. It'll require your password. And then it will require you to agree to everything as you go. Let's open this up a bit. And obviously you can see I'm reading it all. We get to the bottom, we have to type agree. Okay, nothing too much to it, but that'll make sure that's all done for you. The next thing we've got to do is install Node.js. So this is the same one that we did on the PC. Go to nodejs.org, click on install. And then once we've got that, you'll see over here, if I go to my downloads folder, I've already downloaded it just to save some time. And we can click through the installer and just agree to all the defaults on there. Leave the installation location in the same place. And Node.js is what's used f for downloading PhoneGap. All right, so once that's installed, again, fairly straightforward. Then we want to go back into our terminal window and we're going to install PhoneGap itself. Again, you're going to need to be in super user mode in order to do that. So sudo sudo n npm install minus g PhoneGap. Okay, so that'll go off have a talk to the server where it needs to get everything from and then download all the components of it. Don't worry if you get a warning here, that's nothing really to be worried about. It'll go through and get everything you need. It'll probably take a, a minute or two just to, to complete that download. The great thing about these sort of packaging scripts is um, you really don't have to worry about all the configuration. It does everything for you and puts it all in the right spot, which is really nice. Okay, almost there. Now what we'll do, just while that's installing, is um, I'm going to open up a finder window for my development area as well, because this is where we're going to put the the uh, project that we're working on. Alright, this is now installed, so let's see where we are. Let's just clear that screen. PWD will tell us where we're at, which is currently in the development folder, which is the same. Okay, so we've got a terminal window and a, develop and a uh, finder window, both looking at the same spot. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually create ourselves an app. So we can call PhoneGap gap directly, that's now created. And go PhoneGap create, and we'll just call it my app. That seems to be what all the examples use. Okay. And we can now see both here, if I have a look, there's this my app folder, and then also over here we also have the my app folder as well. So let's go and have a look at it. We can see the structures all being created. This is the hello world, effectively. 
Now we could right click on that and open it with Safari if we want to. And you can see it's all up and running. Now this is just HTML at this point though. So while we can work within the browser, we can do a lot of it here. Um, bear in mind that this has, we're not really talking to hardware or anything at this point. This is simply in the browser. But this is one way that we could debug for sure. Um, so that's all been created. But if we want to actually get this going on the phone, we need to actually push it out onto one of the platforms. So you can see here in our phone gap structure here, if we look in platforms, this is currently empty because we haven't created anything. It hasn't been set up for any kind of platform as yet. All right, so what we're going to need to do over here is now do that next stage. So let's change directory into the My App folder. Let's have a look and see what we've got there. All right, so we're definitely in the right place. Just clear that for you so you can see. All right, now we're going to add iOS onto it. So let's go Phone Gap, Platform, Add iOS. All right, doesn't look like it's done much, but it says creating iOS project. So let's have a look here in platforms, and now you can see iOS, and here we go. We've got an entire structure sitting there, which has built us now an iOS version. Now, you can go on from here, and you can build and you can emulate from the command line. I've found that this is a little bit uh, subject to error. Now, it may be my operating system. I'm using the latest one here, um, but it does cause build errors. So... I'm going to go into Xcode, and because I think it's a better way of doing it anyway, and we'll build and emulate from Xcode, and it's not nothing, nothing too scary really. So we'll go in here. We can see that this Xcode project's been created for us. Let's double click on that and fire it up. And welcome to the world of Xcode. So here's our our project. Now we can drop that down, and we can see what's in it. And You'll see under the www folder, here's everything that we had before. So that's all there, exactly the same as what we were looking at previously. But now it's got all this stuff as well. And and these classes are what are used for actually generating the native app. So I know somebody asked uh, during last week's lecture, is it possible to merge a PhoneGap app with a, um, a native app? And well, it completely is possible. So in fact, this is the native app here. So if you're into Objective-C, you can certainly have a play around and look in, at all this stuff. But as far as the scope of what we're doing over these next few weeks is we're not going to worry too much about that. But the great thing is, is that we are in Xcode here and can now start emulating this project. So up here, this is the main thing to look at. So Hello World is the name of the project, and this is the device that we want to test it on. So there's a whole bunch of different devices that come standard. So let's try it on an iPhone 6 to start with. And so we just build it, build succeeded, and this will pop up the emulator. Here it is. So this is the iPhone 6. And so there it is running there quite happily away. And so we go, well, let's just make sure that it's going to look the same on something different. So uh, let's try it on iPad Retina. See what that looks like. There it is. OK. Give it a sec to fire up. There we go. All working. And so you can go through here, you can try any number of them and uh, just make sure that it works. I'll try one more just to make sure. Actually, while we're here, you can see here, so this is a full full working phone. So um, works very well. Does everything you need. Okay, the other thing as well to note is that you actually have an iOS device too. If you've got your phone plugged in, you can push it out to your phone. However, there's a big however here. You have to have the phone set up to be a development um, device, and it's a little bit tricky. So I wouldn't advise doing it this way. If you do want to actually push it onto your phone, I'd do it via the, the Adobe Cloud build. We will, I will show you how to do this a little bit later, depending on how we go with everything else we've got to learn. Um, but for the moment, that's really the best way to get it onto the phone. Otherwise, I've, it's fairly complex to, to show you how to configure your phone to be a development device. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Um, we now have a, a working build. Um, we have PhoneGap installed. We have Xcode installed. And we have it all running. So that's it for iOS. We're now going to move on to how to do the same thing for Android.